the Trump we know now is a very different Trump than got elected in 2016. In what way? The Trump in two, yeah, in what way? Well, I think in 2016, he was a shallow narcissist who thought it would just be cool running for president. Didn't think he'd going to win, but he yeah, liked the man, idea. Yeah. And I think he did have ideas. The Trump now, I think, is I call weaponizing um, narcissism. The Trump we have now realizes if he's going to be great, we all know he wants to be great, then he has to be great. And I think that he's he would go into his next term knowing where the spoons and forks are and knowing who to trust. And I think he would attempt to be great. Purely narcissistically. Welcome to the Futures Edge Podcast. I'm Jim Muriel. That's Bob Iaccino. We have, as you can see in the middle there, Dr. David Collum, who is Professor, is it Professor Emeritus? I like the word Emeritus. Is that oh, some, no, what does that actually, mean? That means I've retired. Oh, no. So you're an active professor. Yeah. No, I'm so just Professor Over the Hill. Professor Over the Hill at Cornell University. <laughs> and uh, that is fantastic. How are you? I'm good. I'm afraid now you have to call me Godfather, but uh... <laughs> <laughs> indeed, right? We're used to that shit. Uh, yeah, right. I was listening to you and Mike Ferris. That was funnier than shit when the when he went to the Godfather drill. <laughs> that was funny stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah that Mike oh, Ferris yeah. guy's a good guy. I liked his podcast. He's a I like sweetheart. Him. There's something yeah. about him that's so sincere. I don't know what it is. He, yeah, he I really liked him. I'm glad you radiate sincerity. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Unlike Bobby and I, who radiates smart assery. Yeah. Yeah. There's that's a plus too. That's a, there's merit to that. And yes. lean angry. And, and angry. Over angry. Yeah. A angry is good. Yeah, I, I mean. At one point, I said I was mad about something, and someone on Twitter said, "You're always mad." And I go, "Yep." <laughs> Last time Dave and I were at dinner, Bobby, um, and we can go deep, as as you probably know. But I felt like I switched into the role of trying to talk him off the ledge. Like, there are great things in this world, too. There are nice people yeah, I, I meet every day. I know. I you just are... haven't met. I just don't know any right now. But there are French Bulldogs, and you have five of them right around you, don't you? Boston Terriers. Boston Terriers. I'm sorry. I want to get into some some meaty stuff. I want to talk about finance. I want to talk about Go part of your, your year-end review. Right. Um, how many people read your year-end review? It's enormous, isn't it? Not a clue. 10, yeah. 15, 20, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just, it's just, it's such an amazing read. I, I don't, I don't have a sense of the stats. I do know I run into people. Like one day I was in a convenience store or something. The guy said, Hey, you write that year-end review. I go, you gotta be kidding. I was up in the Adirondack. So I, I don't really know. I don't have yeah. any, I think any it's sense a lot. of it. When you released the last one, two days after you released it, I walked into my restaurant and two different patrons said, hey, Dave Collin mentioned you in his year-end review. And I was like, oh, so that's pretty cool that this is on Valentine. greatness there, Jimmy. Rush right, with exactly. greatness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so I, and there are times I wonder how I got beamed into this, into this role. Last night I was exchanging a very brief exchange with Eric Weinstein, um, couple dms and, and he says he says you want to have a chat and i go yeah it's two o'clock in the morning and all of a sudden the phone rings i go what what <laughs> now <laughs> so we actually talked till four in the morning my wife said i was psychotic no here's okay i've done a deep dive study on dave Coleman, why he is where he is because it's not good it's question. not just this not just the fact that you have a brilliant mind which is evidenced by your academic career and your academic achievements but it is a bullshit meter that starts from where am I being buffaloed here? And right. it's a willingness to speak out and not care who takes a shot at you. And I think it's a great mix personally. I think, I think that's actually correct. I, yeah. I, I, you know, I'm not academically smart. People say, Oh, that can't possibly be. No, I could go through my record. I worked my ass off to get okay <laughs> grades, right? This was, there was no genius here. <laughs> um, but, uh, but I think, uh, I think there's probably a street sense. I think the bullshit meter works. And I love that. And, and the complete lack of filter is undeniable. Undeniable. <laughs> undeniable. I've never stopped. And nor, I don't intend to stop. And Bobby, by the way, is the same way. And I don't mean to be hogging this all just between you and I, but, um, 
we're not afraid to be fired from jobs that we had if we are speaking reasonable truths. Give them, go, go, they can go fuck themselves. You know, well, they'd have trouble firing me too. So there's I, that. I, I, I'm one of the few who actually know every bit of the details about that whole story. Which, right. <laughs> yes. Bobby, right. you got anything? So I have a funny story to tell you. I tweeted one day oh, a couple of weeks ago about Cornell actually being OK. And I said, you know, we're in the news for all this stuff that's been happening. And I said, no, Cornell's OK. I said the president Pollock is OK. I said the, the, the provost was a rock star. And then I said, you know, Cornell, Cornell's a utopian place. And, and I said, what we have to do is get out of the news cycle. Right. That was really the problem. And uh and I get a call from my brother-in-law, who happens to be a trustee, and he he reads me part of the tweet. And I go, Ezra, I, how the hell did you you get a hold of that? He says, I got it from my boss. I said, Daphne, Daphne saw it. He said, No, my other boss, the chairman of the board of trustees. So the tweet made it all the way to the chairman of the board of trustees, and he was thrilled that someone wasn't shitting down our throats. <laughs> I want to ask you so, something, Dave, because I, I read your year end review as well. Saw Jimmy in there, started laughing. This thing that's happening with the fraud case, okay, right. with, uh, with Trump. Now, I always feel, and everybody always feels the need to do this, right? I didn't vote for Trump before. Uh, you know, I don't know if I'll vote for him now, although I probably will, given what's been going on, just out of sympathy for the crap that he's been put through that no one else has ever been right. put through. Where in the hell do they get off? Two things. Where in the hell do they get off uh, accusing a real estate mogul of fraud when this exact same situation, the way it was described uh, in the documents, happens every single day with real estate guys. Since when do they care about bankers? And then Hochul comes on and goes, by the way, if you're another real estate developer, don't worry, I'm not going to do know, it to I know, you. I know, I know. We're only going to fuck Trump, right? We're um, not going to do it to you. I just want to hear your your take on that. Well, it's pretty clear that the Democratic Party has weaponized the justice system. Uh, it, to me, uh, it's treason of a higher order. So I actually would, you know, hang them from the nearest limb. Um, I, w I, I think they're truly, and part of the problem is that that, that undermines the, the real fabric of society. When you, when so 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 I, I, I say things. I think, well, I got to be on the right side of the law, and then I go, but that doesn't even matter anymore. It just doesn't matter that you're following the laws. The Trump story uh, is just ludicrous because, of course, all the people involved got, uh, got put in their positions because they opposed Trump. And so I think the judge should be disbarred. I think the prosecutor should be disbarred. I think they should be brought up on treason charges. I don't know. Forget about what the real definition of treason is. It's my goddamn definition of treason. I think Fannie Willis ought to be bent over and dealt with. And, and she looks like she's going to be, not just her boyfriend. Um, I think it's one of the most horrific things I've ever seen. The, when, when Biden went on the air and was bragging about putting 870 man years worth of prison time under the January 6th guys, and then they come out and they say, we're going to start going after the guys who didn't even enter the Capitol building. You Nazi fuckheads, right? I mean, I just, there's just, there's just nothing I can say. I just, what I would want to say would get the FBI knocking on my door. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, right? I am a little surprised that you still walk among the living. I'm surprised that I still walk among the living. Um, it, it just must mean that we haven't got to the level of pissing the wrong people off yet or the right people off. We'll see how that plays out. I think the second yeah. biggest disgrace of this, if I could throw them in, the second biggest disgrace of this, obviously the case itself is a disgrace. You can say what you right. want about all the other cases, right? But this right. particular one is just so Outlandish. right before our eyes. And I think the second biggest disgrace of this whole situation is people not people hate Trump so much that they can't see the silliness of this. Right. Like the, the just absolute tomfoolery and banana republicness if that's a word, it is of this because you can go to people and say, well, you know, he, he did, he did say his, if I could get them to believe that my house was worth $10 billion after fricking uh, doing an appraisal themselves. And I get to get a loan based on that. I'm doing it tomorrow. Now I'm probably and, and he paid it back without missing a payment. Bingo. Yeah. Right. Right. So, so yeah. So smart, supposedly smart people put on their moron caps on this one. So, and and I, I just don't understand it because I, I hate Biden at this point. I just yeah. hate Biden at this point. But but I don't like the fact, for example, that the Republicans 
impeach Mayorkas because it is more bull crap. Yeah. And, and I think that the Republicans started with, with impeaching Clinton. Mm -hmm. And if Clinton, if you want to impeach Clinton, let's round up all the people he killed and take them to trial for murder, for Christ's sake. I mean, you know, I, it is statistically impossible to have that many friends and business partners die in unusual circumstances. We've all lived on this planet a very long time. We run statistical analysis as a matter of course, and uh, they're just, it cannot possibly be. It's just and, crazy. And, However, I wanted to add something real quick. And that well, leaves the rape charges off, right? That, that ignores the rape charges. Of course. Yeah, how about that? Well, Juanita Broderick was very convincing on 60 Minutes before our media you decided. Know, you know my claim to fame with Juanita is? Hmm. This is great, actually. She posted the tweet that said, Bill, you know you raped me, Hillary, you know you tried to destroy me. And I said to Juanita, I said, you know, Juanita, you could pin that tweet. And she says, I don't know how to pin a tweet. And so I taught her how to pin tweets. And then she pinned it. And I go, and I, I got screen grabs of the whole conversation. So, so I taught Juanita how to pin a tweet that got unbelievable click counts. That's how you influence an election. That's now, I want to say something before we move on on this, is I have no more blame left for Joe Biden, Fannie Willis, Letitia James, Brandon Johnson, Chicago. I don't blame them more. They told the people, the voters, exactly who they were, and the people voted for them. That is on the backs of people. Joe Biden ran on open borders. Brandon Johnson, Chicago, ran on crime-friendly policies, and the knuckleheads voted for them. Brandon Johnson is exactly who are, he said he was going to be. They voted for him? No, I'm not sure they voted for him. That's the problem, right? <laughs> that is, the, that, that's that the, is problem. the problem. Yeah. And, and I don't think... I personally, first of all, I think they rigged the election period QED. And and I think the data is awfully supportive. And there was a recent paper that came out that really talked about the magnitude of it. But but I get to the bottom line and say, look, here's the deal. They did everything within their power to keep them out of the White House. And you're going to try to make a case to me that they forgot to rig the election. It, it's an impossibility. It's an, it's an impossibility. Not from Chicago. It's an impossibility. Right, we right, right. right. Dead, uh, you're more dead guys vote in Chicago than living yeah, people. Right, right. Yeah. Um, someone said, if I die, please don't vote. Please don't let me vote for Joe Biden. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and so there's that. But I don't, if Joe Biden wins in, in 2024, it's just not imaginable to me. I, no. I, I, he's insane. Yeah. Then we just live in a banana republic. Could we do now. Something else that, that I know yes. is, is something of yours. And I know that Nobody turns into a, a podcast wanting to hear any tales about pedophilia. Um, although, <laughs> it could be a big deal. But anyway, so let's rewind the clock to 2016. And just, I want to tell you what I'm thinking and where I'm crazy. So 2016, the QAnon, Pizzagate, whatever it was, it was outlandish. I thought it was outlandish at the time. I thought it was crazy. Mm -hmm. I wanted to distance myself from these right-wing nutjobs who were pushing out this, this conspiracy, which was crazy. However, now it is eight years later. And literally, we've had two people arrested, one convicted for running the same elite pedophile ring that we that we were talking about in 2016, or that they were talking about. So now you look at the the preponderance of the evidence, including the fact that they haven't released any name of anyone who was trafficked or trafficked to or from. There has to be people trafficked to or from. Then all of a sudden, like people now, I hear people like, "Oh, are you one of those crazy Pizzagate people?" And I'm like, well, well, "Pizzagate's not as crazy now, um, actually." There's a, it, it, on balance, it seems more true than not. What am I missing? You're not. Um, Julian Assange's uh, WikiLeaks email show you Pizzagate's real. Yeah. Uh, th those are, that evidence is strong enough for me to, if you put a gun to my head, say, place your bets. Just, yeah. just those emails alone. And then, then you get guys like Elephantis who was posting under the name Jimmy Comet and posting all sorts of crazy crap online. And, 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 and so, 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 Pizzagate, I'm, I, as you know, I've studied this problem. I've been studying it for hours and hours for, over, up, yeah. for mm -hmm. a long time. I've, I've tried to write something about it. I've got about 150 pages of debris. Um, I, I think Epstein might be a tip of the iceberg. And I think it might be a much bigger story. And Pizzagate is certainly part of it. But there's, I think there's trafficking networks all over the world. I've talked to CIA guys. I've talked to DOD case, work, case officers. Um, I was on a I, – I, I actually – there's a podcast out there I haven't tweeted that I spent two hours going through the whole narrative of, of uh, 
global trafficking and pedophilia and its influence on politics. And it's somewhat disjointed and stuff, but I'm not sure I'm ready to throw it public. So it's just kind of lurking out there with, you know, 20 views. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, what I'm trying to get my brain around is whether um, pedophilia networks are, are, are controlling global politics. And the data looks pretty good to me. And, and, and there's some amazing people signing off on it, like an archbishop in, in the Vatican named Magano who said that, you know, that, 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 this rule, that all the leaders of the world are stuck in this, this network. Um, you know, there's a ton of CIA guys and stuff who are saying it. Um, who is it? Flynn has now jumped on Pizzagate. I, you know, is that is General Flynn? Is that a credible source? You know, depends on which side of the aisle you're on, probably. Um, the, the, the former uh, Secretary General of the United Nations made reference to how, how uh, pedophilia is the currency of geopolitics. You know, there's, 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 there's dozens of guys who are more credible than me who, who talk about how Victor Orban just the other day said, we've got to clear the pedophilia out of our country. He's not talking about pervs and trailer parks. He, he, we know that you got to get pervs and trailer parks out of the game, but that, that's not something the president of a country talks about. He's talking about the fact that they're controlling the politics of, of Hungary. What's holding me back is, is, first of all, it's a very complex story. Second of all, um, I don't want to get whacked. <laughs> and, and I'm not really f afraid of getting whacked. My brother's worried I'm going to blow my credibility. And I go, <laughs> that, that ship sailed. I, I can make the case. I mean, I, I, I collect the data. It's very hard, though, because the, the data is very sketchy because the, the victims are split personality, junky, broken individuals who are coming out saying this is what they did to me and people don't believe them. But, but the data from official sources even say, you know, one to 10 million kids a year are getting trafficked. So cut that in half if you want. I don't care. It's still 500,000 kids. The question is, where are they going? And the, the better question. So I gave this two-hour talk. And uh, someone in the Zoom group, while I was talking, dropped a dime and, and, and called a friend who's, who's, who's a CIA trafficking expert. The guy showed up for the last half hour. And, and he gave this quick synopsis of his view. And it was spot on everything I'd said for two straight hours. And then they kept asking me questions and I'd answer them. And then they'd turn to the CIA guy and goes, yeah, that's pretty much, I agree, not a problem. And so, so it held up well. Um, and uh, I had dinner with Matt Taibbi the other day and I told him this and he was not ready for it. <laughs> it takes time. <laughs> really, is, at first he thought, yeah, but so, so we had a CIA case, off, no, a DOD case officer in the Zoom group. And I, I asked him about trafficking at the very end and he said, uh, he starts talking about Epstein. I go, we all know about Epstein. And it's huge, right? If he has a thousand controlled, politically important people, that's running the world right there. That's it. Yeah. yeah. But it's much bigger than that, I think. And so I, so he starts talking about Epstein. I go, no, no, no. We all know about Epstein. We all know how bad it is. We don't know who they are. We're never going to find out who they are, at least confidently. Um, I'm interested in the deeper, darker stuff. And I said, let me ask you a simple question. And, uh, and this guy, I've checked, this guy's absolutely real. And, and I said, is the Clinton Foundation trafficking children? He said, oh, absolutely. Huh. Now, I don't need to ask him any other question. That question in itself shows the untrained viewer going, holy shit. That means that I have completely and utterly misjudged the magnitude of this problem. Wow. And the evidence supporting the Clinton Foundation as a child trafficking organization is actually compelling. Huh. Wow. I can't do it in a podcast. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. When you talk, and I guess this, I probably just got my answer to this question. When you talk about the data is compelling. I mean, you know, I know how to look at the data of why Apple might go up or something, but I, I don't, what do you mean by the data as much as you're comfortable saying? Well, so for example, there's a woman named Laura Silsby who, who got arrested twice trafficking in Haiti. This was above the fold news story made a call into the Clintons. They got her out of Haiti and, 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 uh, and, uh, and nothing happened to her. Uh, and one of the questions I like to ask people who are in disbelief is, say, okay, if you accept that a million kids are disappearing, name for me one person who's gotten in trouble for accepting one of these kids, one person, one person. And there's one answer that I think would be the, the probable answer 
would be De Dennis Haster, right? Oh, That'd be yeah. the one that we know. But you go, okay, now name a second one and you'd mm -hmm. be out of luck. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that there's whole documentaries of people who've been caught for which nothing has happened. They're, they're, they're well-known cases for which so, someone steps in. So if you dig into it, you, you just keep finding the Clinton's fingerprints all over these problems. But they are just part of the story. The, the art, the art import export world is, is, is up to their asses. The, the CIA guy said he estimated 18 to 20 percent of the CIA is involved in child trafficking. And I'm going, okay. holy shit, I didn't expect that. You know? Just to, to put a fine point on this too, is that this is, and for people who are watching and think that we're crazy, this is verifiably true going back hundreds of years, even probably more. Like I, a buddy of mine was an FBI investigator for 40 years, just was talking to him about a month ago. And when he began 40 years ago, there was plenty of the J. Edgar Hoover um, guys who were still oh, on the staff who he Roy was friendly Cone. with. Who were, yeah. Roy Cohn. Yeah. Right, right. But anyway, so- it was with in the in the organization. It was standard procedure that if you were investigating anyone who had any sort of name, and within that investigation, you found mm -hmm. something that was compromising in any way, sexually. I'm not even right. whether it be pedophilia or sexually in any way. Immediately was taken out of the uh, investigation and brought to a special file with Hoover because Hoover because he used it. You know, he if he needed it at a point point in time. And the point I'm trying to make is that is that that's. That was just casually mentioned. Like, of course, that's the case. If we're investigating mm -hmm. someone who could be a political problem, you just you pocket any of the things that uh, that they do that you could bring out at any time or at least threaten with them because it's not valuable if you bring it out. And that's what's happening with Epstein. Correct. It is. Um, there, there, the, but the, there is this question, where do a million kids go? Yeah. And I don't think there's a demand for a million kids in a sort of a purely pedophilic world. I just, I just don't know how you'd spread a million kids. It, 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 I, I think probably or organ harvesting, including blood harvesting is probably maybe a big consumer of these kids. Um, the guys who seem to, so one of the, the risks besides the fact that your source material is always a little bit, you're not going to read it on, you're not going to hear it on CNN. Of course, that's not credible at all. So no. that's not going to help. But, um, the sources are always sketchy. And so you're looking to sort of cross check, but the problem is you don't know if the origin of everyone, what everyone is saying is the same source. So it could be some tweet from 20 years ago and that's it. Um, so, so you kind of have to use your bullshit meter set on, on, you know, maximum setting and just say, I just, I'm not yet sure whether this is valid. Oprah gets picked on. I don't think it's valid. Um, Tom Hanks gets picked on. Uh, it's getting a little sketchy in there. Um, Hollywood, I think, is loaded with with pervs, just just loaded with pervs. I, I, I almost there are claims by Hollywood insiders who say you can't get good gigs unless you are compromised. And so uh, there are Hollywood producers who have come out and uh, and, and called out the, the pedophiles and then got whacked. Wow. And, yeah, and so, so, so the fatality rate of people blowing the whistle. Now, my concern is I might have misread the room. There's a woman named like Liz Crocken, who's way more outspoken than me. She's a former sort of ABC or NBC talking head. So she's got credibility. She's kind of Liz Crocken.com now a little bit too much. Um, but I could be misreading it. She could be part of some master, master plan. Um, master organization which he plays her role and they can say okay liz we have control over liz this guy cornell we don't we got to deal with him and and as j6 showed no matter how innocent you are if, if they decide that you need to be used to display the force of the state you will be used to display the force of the state so the question i like to ask is let's say uh Here's a couple questions. Let's say your daughter is 14 years old and she comes home with a double mastectomy because some doc did it without telling you. What's your next move? Uh, that's, a next move? Yeah, that's a rhetorical, yeah, rhetorical question. But I think that doctor would be first in line for a sex change, right? Yeah, yeah for me, right? <laughs> yes. Right. Um, yeah. Imagine. Imagine you have a son or something who, who's in jail for 15 years because it's January 6th. What What are you thinking about now? 
I, I'm not saying that that this that the 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 non legal solutions are adequate, but I'm saying that the legal solutions are inadequate. Right. And and so I, I'm sitting there going, boy, I better get not get liver cancer, because because I will identify the person who is most guilty for putting my son in prison for 15 years for no fucking reason. Right. And I'll find a way to get revenge. Okay. And, and this is this is. This is in the olden days, you know, if you're a dick, we were watching a show about 1720 town on the on the the, 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 the Hudson Bay and it was lawless. Right. And some guys a super dick. And I'm going, I, there's something not right about that, because if you're a super dick in a lawless place, your life expectancy is going to be about 20 minutes. And so I think you survived in the old days by not being a super dick. And and then the question is so 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 if, if you're a doctor doing gender transitions on 14 year olds without telling the parents, we have a problem. There should be a little voice in your head that says, you know, this could cause me more trouble than it's worth. And and I, if I'm on a jury, no father's getting convicted of anything he does. I'm really surprised that hasn't happened yet. I, I'm stunned. I really am. I'm stunned. Mm -hmm. I'm stunned. And and. and 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 it would be a good thing for society. I, I would like the gender bending doctors who are doing it very recklessly, in my opinion. Now, I'm sympathetic to someone who thinks they're in the wrong body, right? Amen. Being a teenager is hard enough. Yeah. But a doctor who talks to you for some period of time, brief period, and then is willing to lop your tits off or cut your dick off or whatever, that doctor sh should be aware of risk. Yeah, and, and by the way, even if that doctor fully 100% believes what he's doing is the right thing. Tough luck. Tough, tough luck. luck. Tough luck. So do I. I You're just you an and idiot. I believe right. the same thing, right? <laughs> so, so here's what's going to take that out, actually. It's a simple solution. Uh, there's a, there's a, um, a, a statute of limitations on lawsuits on, on these treatments, and they're stupidly short. So what they have to do is keep the person who's transitioning happy about what the hell's happening for a year or two. They're talking about extending it 20 years, and all of a sudden Ooh. the clinics are going, oh, we cannot take the risk of people having to be happy with what we did to them for 20 years. Oh. And so, and the insurance companies are starting to say, we're not going to insure you for this shit. There, there, there's a lot of – so I think that part of the narrative that is appalling, which I'll throw in there, guys doing women's sports, I think is going to wrap itself up. I, I think it's going to I think it's going to become an unmanageable mess. I hope so. And I did a poll on Twitter about dudes doing women's sports. Right. So so it's everywhere now. Right. Well, I did a poll and I said, look, no waffling, no if, ands or busts. Do you support dudes doing wi women's sports? And I got ninety seven point six percent. No. So it means society has decided. But somehow it's still happening. Yep. And I, I, I don't know. You know, if you're a. If you're a female former athlete, so you're out of the system, you got nothing to lose, and you're not speaking up, you, it's your fault. It no is. One, one time I cornered a three three medal Olympic athlete, a woman. I didn't intend to do this. I said, I said, what are your thoughts on men competing in women's sports? And I watched her tighten up. And then I watched her give me a, a canned delivery. And I realized it wasn't fair to ask her the question. Because if she gave me an honest answer and somehow it got out, she'd be kicked off the team. And yeah. I realized I put it right over a barrel by asking her that. And so, but, but there's plenty of people who, who have nothing to lose in that world who, you know, I've coached two collegiate sports. I know sports. And they both had women's components. And, and, and you know, the, these these gender bending idiots who've never played a sport. So they don't know what they're asking the women to sacrifice. And Amen. so I, I think, I think women's sports team should be boycotting. I think, you know, I, and I think they'll, uh, you know, and, and, and I've got a daughter playing a sport and some dude hurts her. The mm. lawsuits are flying. The lawsuits yep. and are And then we're flying. circling back to perhaps old fashioned frontier justice too. It gets complicated there because it's 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 not, it's not quite the same thing, but yes, but but I'm 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 on releasing the hounds on that person if my daughter gets hurt by a dude. Damn on straight. the other hand, she has the right to not play. She has the right to say, "Screw you, I'm not playing." 
And I think her, her teammates ought to do it. I think the coaches ought to do it. Women's sports is dominated by women, and they're not speaking up except for Riley Gaines. By the way, you and I both know a guy, I'll tell you offline, who's paying for Riley Gaines security detail. Really? We both know him. Wow. He told me, and he's paying for her security detail. She has to walk around with, uh, with guards. Huh. That's, that's fucked up. Wow. I just, I don't even know what to say to this shit. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I know, I know. When I got canceled, I slept with shotguns. <clears throat> I remember you telling I, me that. I put yeah. knives around the house. I said, look, if I'm going to the light, I ain't going alone. <laughs> somehow, somehow I'm going to, I'm going to be going hand in hand with somebody. I wasn't worried about Cornell too, so I was worried about Antifa showing up. Yeah. Yeah, the first and I, could, I could imagine uh, someone giving me guff saying this shit on this podcast. I go, OK, let's have it out. Let's do it in public. Let's find out if you think cutting you, some guy's daughter's tits off for a good idea. Let's 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 lay it out on the lay goddamn table. Yeah, lean in. Yeah, say right. it out loud. Lean in. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tell me, say you endorse cutting off teenage girls tits. Endorse it. Castrating them chemically. Endorse it. Sign off on that. One time there was a safety issue and they were trying to do something I thought was not safe. I said, send me a letter saying you're taking responsibility for the issue and we'll do it. And they said, oh, never mind. Got to go. <laughs> Got to go. Got to go. Sorry. Never mind. Dave, you're not so the people ought to get mad. I've heard uh, say that it seems like things are swinging back. Um, on these other, these on, minor issues. Well, that's what There's I was no going to no big say. swing. That's what I was going to no say. Big swing. Where is the sort of line where the swinging stops. Can you kind of identify it? Well, weaponization of the DOJ for starters. Okay. And, and I, I'm torn. So let's say Trump gets elected. Let's say they can't rig it enough. Let's say you know, 90, 10 vote. And they, no matter RFK what they do. They might be part of the reason they can't. <laughs> we can talk about that in a minute. I, oh, fascinating. I'd like Trump yeah. to sign him on his ticket. But if Trump gets in there, I... The two lobes of my brain are battling whether I want to see him go full Leroy, Leroy Jenkins and get it's revenge. Exactly the same for me. I don't know what I want him to do. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah. No, but I don't know whether I want him to get even or, or just try to move through it and 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 improve the country. And and by the way, I think the Trump we know now is a very different Trump than got elected in 2016. In what way? The Trump in two, yeah. In what way? Well, I think in 2016 he was a shallow narcissist who thought it would just be cool running for president. Didn't think he'd got to win, but he yeah, liked the idea. And I think he did have ideas. The Trump now, I think, is I call weaponizing um, narcissism. The Trump we have now realizes if he's going to be great, we all know he wants to be great, then he has to be great. And I think that he's he would go into his next term knowing where the spoons and forks are and knowing who to trust. And I think he would attempt to be great, purely narcissistically. All right. So can I take you in a different direction then? I, I think I know what I would like Trump to be, I think. I would like him to be president. Not go full. <laughs> I would like him to not go full Leroy Jenkins. I would like him to go partial Leroy Jenkins. That's, a, that, that's right. That's yeah, right. I think if, if he actually, because if he goes fully Roy Jenkins, I think he has every right to be, to, to do that, to be honest. I mean, but then they'll I, say, I, I told would. you so. Right. I then I they'll would. say, I told you so. And then they'll say, I told you so. Threat mm -hmm. to democracy, tyrant, ignoring mm -hmm. uh, a mm -hmm. lot of the tyrannical qualities of what's already going on. And I don't even blame Joe Biden. I mean, I watched my father, uh, you know, suffer with Parkinson's dementia, and I see the exact same thing in this man. I, See, I, I do feel, blame Joe actually, Biden. Well, I feel really sorry for him because I don't think he even knows where he is anymore. I truly but don't. But he's been a bad person for his whole a long time. Okay, fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. So, so, but, so, and I blame Jill Biden in a very big way. She should have been hauling his Agreed. ass off the screen. Agreed. I mean, she should have said, come on, Joe, time to go. Totally agree on that part. But I think if, if Trump gets in and he goes after Fauci and those guys, Mm -hmm. goes after the, the bad actors in the DOJ, not just on his own case, but mainly on the J6 stuff. In good cases, like, yeah. Yeah, the good case. Yeah, the J6 Well, case. I want him to get day one says, and release them all. Move on. I just yeah. want him to, to go and release them all day one. Well, his first day should be a blanket pardon of everyone. You could say, well, there's some guys who do deserve to be in jail. I don't want him fucking around trying to figure that out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want him to just do a clean sweep. 870 hours of prison time, gone. 
I mean, I get really tired of trying to convince some of my friends on the left, and I have some, and most of them have decided on RFK, to be honest. Like 95% right. of them. Well, those are people on the left, on Bobby? Yes, on the left. Well, that's good to hear. Okay. Yeah, and I'm not surrounded by as many in Florida as I used to be when I was in Chicago, but there's still a big handful of them, and they've all decided, I got to do RFK because I can't do Trump and I can't do any more Biden. But then if Trump goes in there and goes full Le Leroy Jenkins, they're going to ignore everything that was done by this Justice Department, this administration, mm -hmm. and just go, see, we told you. And he will that's just going to infuriate right? me as an individual. But I guess I don't get to make that decision. So you still so have friends on think? the left, huh? What's, <laughs> I do. I, I ch Listen. I try to take it to the point where I go, look, I had a friend of mine say recently to me, well, you know, I like DeSantis, except that banning book stuff. I said, okay, pause for a second. What, he lives here in Florida with me. Well, not with me, he's not in my house. But I said, okay, what book can you not buy? Tell me a book. Let's go on Amazon right now, pick a book, make one up. I bet you I can find one with the made up title and I'll order it on Amazon right now, I'll bring it over to your house. I'll tell you when you couldn't buy. What's Biden's up? greatest hits. <laughs> <laughs> but Bobby, to take that one step further, you can even take that book into the school. It's not yeah. even illegal. It's not even banned in the school. I know. It's just not and part I, of the curriculum. Yeah. So here's, here's, here's a book worth goes, reading. Well, anyway, I don't, he goes, anyway, I don't think you're right about that. But let's just move on. And I'm like, okay, Ricky, that's, Ricky that's Schlotz. Ricky Schlotz, Canceling the American Mind is a good read because she talks about the, what is largely a left wing problem. Right. But she does show us in her book where the right wing is contributing. And so she works very hard to try to bring. Now, I still think it's a 90 10 ratio. And mm -hmm. she tries to make it not a 90 10 ratio, but I, I don't think this is a left wing thing, in my opinion. Um, so, uh, so no, I don't want him to go full Leroy Jenkins for that reason. But I still there's they a dark it. there's a dark streak in me that wants to see him going right, 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 yeah. it, right, right. So I, you know, I want to see him do like in the professional wrestling where he beats the guy. <laughs> 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 so I, who do you want to see on his ticket? You get to pick his his running mate. Who do you want? If I get to pick, you get to pick it. RFK. I would love that. I, I would just okay. Think give that me a would... second choice now, or Jimmy, you give me your first choice then. Vivek. He's too smart. Good point. Yeah, I don't think Vivek could do it. He's too, uh, he's, he's so intellectually above the, the crowd, he, he wouldn't connect with them, I think. Mm -hmm. And that's why I, didn't, I don't think he was able to get legs. I don't know anything I mean, about Christy Noem. Is she any good, Bobby? Do you know her or no? Um, I, I like her as that choice. I like him doing something different. Wait, you know, is she, is, was she the hand? No, that was Bobert. No, that was Bobo. <laughs> I can't believe you said you going to say hand? Hand? No. <laughs> It's... Um, uh, now, if I want to go on a date, I want to go on with her. Yeah, I was going to say she's she's good at dating. Is that something she's supposed to be embarrassed about? Yeah, I'll throw some others out there. I would love to see. I, I would like to see something. I wouldn't mind seeing someone like Douglas McGregor. I don't know him. I would love to see him Secretary of Defense. Dan Crenshaw. Uh, I, I would I'd like to see I, Dan Crenshaw. I'm I'm less clear on Crenshaw. I think he's a neocon. You might be right. Yeah, I don't want any more wars. Right. 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 Yeah. I think he's a neocon. You might be right. Uh, and I, I uh, uh, Tulsi Gabbard. Oh, oh, I love that. That be wouldn't awesome. be a dynamite ticket because she'd bring left wing supporters, chicks. My actual right? dream ticket was Vivek and Tulsi. Yeah. I've been saying that for a long time. Yeah, I, yeah, I saw together. that. I, I'd be. I've been talking about Tulsi for probably a dozen years. I yeah, spotted you her. You have. I, I spotted know. her years ago and said, "You yeah, got to keep an have. eye on her." And they're going, "Who the hell are you talking about?" And I go, yeah. "That she's from Hawaii, and you know she's a milf. She's got everything, right?" Yeah. And uh, that was that was my. I, I would literally be pounding the streets. I'd quit my job, and walk around and go, "How dumb are you to not want this?" Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, by the way, you change the two of them. I don't care which one. He quit his job. What's this <laughs> professional <laughs> welfare? Professional welfare line stander. <laughs> Why not? It's here. So, okay, I have a question for both of you. you so you said that you spoke to Eric uh, Weinstein recently, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm a huge fan. Eric is way over my head, but I'm a huge fan of his. Eric's over that. everyone's head. Yeah, he really Eric is. is. Eric is brilliant of a, of a different kind. So I'm a huge fan of his brother, Brett. And I read Hunter Gatherer's Guide to the 21st Century that him and uh, his wife, Heather Haynes. It's a great book. Great book. I, I'm Chesterton's just Fence. Chesterton's, Chesterton's Fence. Fence. Yeah. And right. 
he took went over the the whole Ox, Occam's razor was all over the book and Hamlin's razor was all, all over the book, all, all this right. stuff. And I'll be honest, my intellectual level is about here. So I had to read most pages two and three times before I moved on. So this 300 and some odd page book took me about six months to get through. And Audio books. Yeah. Audio books. Well, Audio I, books. I don't know that. I, I listen to their podcasts all the time. But anyway, I'm getting off the track. This is a question for both of you. He had an idea a while ago, and I don't know if it was his or Heather's. And it just fascinates me, the dark horse ticket. Do you remember that? So the dark horse ticket was somebody from the right and somebody from the left. Oh, bipartisan ticket. Yeah. Yeah. And after two years, they switch. Oh, yeah. One is vice president, one is president. After two years, they switch. Right. And I was just fascinated by this because he said this forces the two sides to work together and become the actual uniparty that they basically already are. Is Jimmy going uh, to choke the chicken? What's he doing there? No, I was just closing my window. I was cold. I had my windows cool. open because it's so just this is the beauty of Tulsi Gabbard in that it would be a ticket where the VP candidate had run for president from the other party four Love years it. ago. Yeah. Right? How do you not like that? And by the way, um, I'm bringing this up because I love the idea. I love the book. And I want someone listening to this to reach out to Brett because he's not answered me yet to come on this show. But go ahead. Um, yeah, I am connected with Brett, but I think he's pretty busy and I don't think yeah, his is. Tucker, I don't yeah. think his Tucker Carlson, uh, <laughs> interview cleared his docket at all. Cause it was a brilliant interview and, uh, Tucker's done some brilliant ones. He's done some bizarre ones. Like, like when he did Kevin Spacey, what, what was that? Oh, hold on, hold on. Tucker Carlson interviewed Kevin Spacey. It's worse than that. Kevin <laughs> Spacey stayed in character during the interview. Which really? character? The, the the sleazy politician guy. Oh, What's the name of that TV House show? Cards. House of Cards. House of Cards. He stayed in House of Cards, and I'm going, what is Tucker wow. doing? This is That's creepy. Wow. Long. It, I wanted to not watch it, but I stayed with it just out of principle. Mm. So I, I was, have a quick, like a minor, minor, cause I wanted to get to finance, but it looks like we're not going to, which I'm fine with, by the way. <laughs> um, we, I was at a party, and I have friends who are high-level education-wise, high-level, uh, you know, uh, success-wise in their careers. And I mentioned, you know, that the CIA had essentially infiltrated, you know, the top 10 tech companies. And they looked at me like I had two heads. And I was like, what, what are you guys talking about? I said, let's imagine that all of us ran the CIA right here. And our job was literally to gather intel. And then all of a sudden, six, eight companies figure out the best way to do that better than anyone ever has. Literally they're Intel gathering companies. We're not going to tap into that. And at the time, the the data is so supportive that, that, but but the other thing, they they were angel investors in these companies. They 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 actually didn't just jump in. They founded the goddamn companies. (laughs) Yes. Did you know that Bobby? That's the Mike Pence thing that just came out. Literally Google. That was the the CIA's money. The defense department's money as well. That started Google. Correct. I only know it to be true with Google. I don't know if it's anybody else. No, no, Facebook. Facebook. They too. were very early in Facebook. And you know that if the CIA comes to you and says, oh, by the way, we're going to partner up with you, what are you yes. going to say? Yes. <laughs> what are you going to say? No. To. By, the, by the way, if you look at things like tech revenues and tech earnings and stuff, you have no idea. I look at a company like Facebook and I go, it's a piece of crap. Mm-hmm. Right. These are not this is not standard oil and, and U.S. steel and General Motors. This is crap. So then the question is where these revenues come from. And, and of course, Zuckerberg says, oh, ad revenues. I go, the ad revenue business can't be that big. No. There's just not enough money to, to make those come. So the question is, what percentage of are coming from black ops budgets? How much <laughs> of their earnings are coming from black ops budgets? Because, you know, yes, Catherine Austin fits. She'll tell you there's 20 trillion missing from the Pentagon. How much did that go to Google, to Facebook, to Twitter, to you name it, to yeah. SpaceX, to, to to Tesla? Yeah. If we were working with the CIA, we'd do the exact same thing, and then they get to a critical mass where they, if they need funding, nobody's going to say no to them for the same reason that nobody said no to them at Google. You they just if I, if, funded. They funded Walt Disney to make Disney World. Really. Yes. Why do we think Trump is still alive? Fascinating question. I think, I think he'd be a tough whack. Mm-hmm. I, I think, I think, 
Um, I, I'm not convinced the CIA works for us. Let's start with that. Yeah. So the CIA is domiciled in the United States. It's no more it's no more U.S. based than 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 J.P. Morgan. So I say, OK, J.P. Morgan's a U.S. bank. Yeah. Well, they have branches in every country in the world. And when the Fed is bailing out banks, the Fed's bailing out banks, no matter where the hell they are. And so, you know, Federal Reserve's not federal. Powell's not worried about the United States. He's worried about the banks, and those are multinational. And so I think the CIA, in a nutshell, is a global crime syndicate that is domiciled in the United States, has a has an, a sort of above in view budget from the US, and has their, their black ops budget, which is potentially much bigger. So if you read about the drug trade, for example, I, I always knew the CIA, not always, but for a long time, the CIA dabbled in the drug trade. There's a book called Operation Gladio that makes a very compelling case that the entire drug trade is a triumvirate between the CIA, which does geopolitical shit, organized crime, which gets the drugs to the street, and the Vatican, which banks. And, and now you take that triumvirate of power players. Are you going to be able to try to take over their territory? <laughs> you could be a Mexican drug lord. You're not going to touch those guys. You're going to you try to do that. Guess what? You're about to see the, the, the U.S. Marines show up on your shores. Right. And so 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 um, so then that, that's why I think also the CIA said, well, we could use some more revenue. Let's traffic children. It's one hundred and fifty four billion dollar annual business it's more money i think i made the right decision not having any Can well we you? agree with that we agree with that bobby mm. we think that you're the shallow end of the gene pool and that we should we should <laughs> not children. we should not we should not promote them uh, and the fact that you be one of those dads the fact that you couldn't news, get so. the fact that you couldn't get it up is a sort of a, a, a poorly kept <laughs> secret that's the other vaccine <laughs> No, no, I'm I'm fine with that kind of a take on it. I'm good with it. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> no, but Bobby, you know, being particularly being Italian, and I do think one of the reasons See, that Italian, he's admitting he's Italian. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah. One of the reasons I think that they got into organized crime a little bit too. I do think Italians tend to be a little angrier, a little shorter yeah. to temper. Um, some cultures also just seem shorter. to be. But yeah, but I'm saying to you, Bobby, and Dave knows that when you have with kids, a flat head with a flat so head, yeah. Anyone messes with your kids like you've never felt that kind of anger before. And you've yeah. felt a lot of anger before. I have. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. So. But but also, I think Italians were very, you know, patriotic. Mm -hmm. The Italian-Americans were patriotic as hell. So 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 as the story goes, you can say that in front of everything I ever say, that they use the Italian mob to, to soften up Sicily for the invasion during World War Two, And Lucky then when the they channel. went to. Right. They got him out of jail. They sprung him from jail to do it. Hold on a sec. They didn't get him out of jail at first. He he gave them because he was a patron. They said they'd get him out of jail. They said they wouldn't. And then he sunk the Navy's biggest boat in New York Harbor from jail. And then they let him out of jail. That's a fact. <laughs> right. Right. Yes. Right. I, I know that part, actually. <laughs> right. And so what happened is um, when they went to create the CIA, the foundational staff was organized crime. They didn't. They didn't say, "Oh, let's go hire some some really well trained, you know, lawyers from Harvard Law School." No, they 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 hired the guys who they were working with. So the CIA's very beginning people. starts with organized crime. I always love bringing up to people that the largest mass lynching in U.S. history was 1891 in New Orleans, and it Italians. was uh, eleven Italian Americans. Mm -hmm. um, that's the single largest mass lynching that ever took and place. Do you know United what States. what we celebrate now because of that lynching? You're asking me? Yep. No. What do you celebrate? Columbus Day. After that mass lynching of Italian Americans, the uproar was enormous. They the threw you a bone. They, they threw, threw you a bone. They threw the Italians a bone by uh, by uh, instituting Columbus Day as a national holiday. Is that, that, probably pissed, now. that probably pissed off the Irish. <laughs> it sure does. <laughs> they, they're so stupid. They want to go get mass lynch just to have it app, just have them to get some. Speaking of the Irish, I used to have a T-shirt that I wore. Obviously, St. Patrick's Day is a huge day in Chicago, and I have a T-shirt that says, St. Patrick was Italian. You're welcome. <laughs> was he really Italian? Uh, his parents were Roman aristocracy. Oh, I didn't so, know that. Yeah, so I was, that doesn't mean he's Italian, that, that though, does it? That doesn't mean he's Italian, but if We're you tell him he's Irish, it anyway. that, he just gets mad. <laughs> right, 
right? We're well, going to give you credit for some goal shit. anyway was to get a drunk hey, Irish guy. You guys are tops in my book for lasagna. I mean, I, oh yeah, <laughs> just you can stop there, and our contribution yeah, is good. That's exactly Thanks right. Giving us I that. was I was making a big lasagna. This is how stupid I am. I was making a big lasagna, and I said to I said, to, well, we can freeze. I said to my son, does it freeze well? And he said. Dad, half the store is frozen lasagna. And I go, yeah, you make a good point there. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, who makes a small lasagna? Stop using oh, you know, that. Oh, that's just stupid. That's just stupid, right? Lasagna, make yeah. huge, uh, you know, I need to buy a bigger oven when I make lasagna. Bobby, why is everything so expensive? Just to, to put some, a point on this, I haven't brought my lunch to work in 20 years. And my three eggs and bacon used to cost seven bucks. Now they cost 14 bucks. My wireless bill was so expensive. Why the heck is wireless so expensive? I don't know. I mean, it feels like a car payment from 10 years ago. What you pay for wireless now? I mean, what are you paying all that money for? Is it speed, coverage, data? Is it this 5G that we all needed access to? Unlimited talk and text, which I feel like we've had forever. Mobile hotspots, which I don't use all that much. What are we paying all that money for? This is not going to come as a surprise to you, but we have the answer right here on the Futures Edge podcast because the Futures Edge podcast is partnering with Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile offers all these features for as low as $15 per month. It's built on the nation's largest 5G network. The reason it keeps costs low is because they sell direct to you online. They cut out the retail stores. They cut out the salespeople. It's just a much more efficient process. Like why should anybody have to pay more than you have to? for access to the same exact network. Go to mintmobile.com slash futures edge. Also linked in the show description to get a premium wireless service for, you ready for it? 15 bucks a month. Okay, and if you like people who are old, like Bobby and I, we don't like to change anything. We don't like our routines to change. Now, is, you want to know how hard it is to switch your service? Well, the big wireless companies want you to think it's really hard. But switching to Mint Mobile super easy thanks to their digital eSIM card, which most phones now have. You can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your home. If your phone doesn't have an eSIM, Mint will ship you a new SIM card for free. How about that? You know, Jimmy and I talk about not wanting anyone to tell us what to do, that sort of libertarian bent that we both have. Well, big wireless wants you to think they're the only option. So do not be fooled. Go to mintmobile.com slash futures edge. Also, again, linked in the show description and stop paying more than you have to for your phone plan. By the way, now through the end of January, new customers can get any plan for just 15 bucks a month when they purchase three months or more. This includes the unlimited plan, which is normally $30 a month. So not only are you going to save the difference between your current plan and Mint Mobile's normal pricing, but you're going to save $45 for three months or more if you sign up for more versus Mint's own normally low prices. It's complete no-brainer. Don't even think about it. Go to mintmobile.com forward slash futures edge. But maybe you should wait till after you watch the podcast. We don't want you guys leaving the podcast right now. So watch the podcast first and then go to Mint Mobile and hit that link. Thank you guys. Do we have any do, financial questions for Dave? Because people are going to be like, <laughs> we, we, should, we should talk about when the shit's going to hit the fan because I think right. it's going to be gruesome. Okay, yeah, let's let's spend the next t- quick 10 minutes on... Is, there a, is uh, there a swan of color coming up? Do you see... where? Do, what is the swan? I know well, what see, I think it is. I, I tend to not consider black swans as important events. I tend okay. to... I, I, as, as you guys know, I, I made a case that we're so overvalued that I think we're going to grind grind out undervaluation over decades i remember that so so i I think i I think we're going to have booms and busts and stuff like that and people the way you adjust investors attitudes and price is every time the investors get on their feet and think they're okay you knock them down again and and that's how you correct the market if 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 every time the the market goes down to some level it bounces back you've corrected nothing you just get the jimmy iorios hitting the bit hard (laughs) and so if we drop 50 percent tomorrow Jim would be a buyer. No doubt. Right? You, got, yeah. you guys would be jumping in. And, yeah. and so what you need to do is not get down, you know, 15 or 20 and then have people get on their feet. And then it kind of goes back up. They go, oh, let's knock them down another 10 percent. You go, OK, that was bad. I'm just getting a little old. And then like in the Nikkei, 35 years later, you're still getting knocked down, although they're getting on their feet. But the Nikkei could be the most spectacular double top in history. 
That would be amazing. Right? <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? Um, 67 to 81 was a horrific period where inflation adjusted. The market got knocked down seven, uh, 75%. Um, you know, I've got this chart that I really like where if you're holding at the top, the inflation adjusted 75 years later, you're at the same price. People don't know that. They don't understand that there are periods in history where we've treaded water, inflation adjusted for 70 five years they don't they don't understand that inflation adjusted the the, the market is if, if you adjust for inflation not using cpi which we know is bullshit especially since around 1980 it, it, it went into the bullshit zone you adjust for C, cpi you adjust for inflation instead using m2 money supply which strikes me as a real clean inflation metric because it is you know if inflation's money supply yep. uh ron grice of the of the church store Showed, first showed me a plot of, of the market adjusted for the, the, the market cap adjusted for uh, M2. And over 100 years, it hadn't moved. 100 years, it had not moved. Then he showed me, he said, in case you're getting beaten up on Twitter because of that chart you used, he says, let me give you another. It was the, the total return of the market over that 100 years adjusted for M2. And it was up 3.79% annually. That happens to be almost identical to the number Buffett said is all you can expect. That Those are valuation independent reads. That's assuming valuation doesn't move. Those are just sort of long-term, guy named Ed McQuarrie said the same thing. So, so it, the current valuation, I have it 150, 180% overvalued. And you can say, oh, I don't like that metric. I go, okay, I got another one for you. Try this one. Oh, you don't like that one? Here, I try this one. I got 25 of them. They all paint the same picture that we're way overvalued. Now, here's, here's, I figured out how to say it. There's not a single market or even a single equity in history that got way overvalued that didn't eventually become cheap. But the one, the one thing not I not a single one in history. And by the way, Bobby, for you, Dave, and I have disagreed about this part for years, when we've discussed this too. I think the one wild card in the equation is the the you said M two money supply, but just the general devaluing of the dollar through money creation. But through that's inflation. Yes, inflation I know. Inflation adjusts that. What, you're going to get market doing, cap. What they're doing, in my opinion, is they're forcing you to do something with your dollars. You know what I mean? So they're literally pushing people into the stock market. And that I understand that works up until it doesn't, but right. I keep looking at it like, where, what are you supposed to do with your money? I have land, I have real estate, I have uh, gold, silver, Bitcoin, but I also have stocks and I have stocks because you, again, they're denominated in dollars and the weaker that dollar gets, something's got to go up. That makes sense? Y yes, until it doesn't. Right. But and the question and, is when doesn't it? Right. And I... I, I what what people will find, even those who think they understand this stuff, is that when it finally comes time to revalue everything, right, whether it's real estate along the California coast or Florida or whatever, your house, um, equities, when it comes to revalue everything, I, there there will be no place to hide. And and the nightmare scenario for me is, is that they can cause the thing to just tread water. And provide. I would love to buy buy stuff at fair value. I, I don't need cheap. I'll take it at fair value. Um, it, it, the longer they keep it in this bloated, bizarre situation, the longer I have to sit there and I can't buy something that's way overvalued. I just in my I have a, I have a filter. I put every major decision through, and the decision is: if this goes very, very wrong, will you forgive yourself? And if the answer is no, I don't do it. And if I buy into a Stan Druckenmiller tech stock fund in March of 2000, and it goes very wrong, I would not forgive myself, just like Stan has never forgiven himself. Mm -hmm. And so I look at the markets, I say, look, I, I will forgive myself for buying some pretty decent looking energy equities, some materials equities. I have no trouble owning gold. Gold's up, you know, since 1971, it's up seven and a half percent a year, right? Yep. Uh, and now that's, now here's the horror story. This is the good news, bad news for me. I'm sufficiently old and sufficiently affluent now that I, I save about 25% of my gross salary. I saved money while my kids were in college. Wow. 
That's I save about 25% of my gross salary every year. It is not enough to compensate for inflation now. Yep. And, 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 and the, the, the key there is you say, well, how big a portfolio do you have? Unfortunately, the answer is pretty big. And it's pretty big because I did really well to 99. I completely skipped the dot-com collapse, completely skipped it, bought gold, but started buying energy equities as an inflation hedge, not realizing I was catching a commodity bull. And then what I missed was the 2010 to 2020, whatever, bull market. I, I really missed that. And I compounded like 4%. It was, it was uninspired. But the next 10 years will determine whether I'm right or wrong. I still beat the market over 20 years by 2% annualized, the S&P. But the last 10 sucked. Yeah. But the next 10, you know, during the noughts, while most people are getting kicked by two bear markets, neither of which, in my opinion, fully corrected the markets, neither did. But while they're getting kicked by two bear markets, I compounded 13% a year for that decade. So that sure. makes all the difference in the world right there. One decade was, a, was now I can't fuck up. That's the goal. Don't fuck up. Okay. And so I'm not going to buy shit. I made a mistake in 08, 09 when I had a lot of cash and I, I, I got greedy and I thought there was another halving in the process. There should have been another halving in the process. It should have, should, it shouldn't have stopped where it stopped, but $30 trillion, it's amazing what that will buy. And straight. No one's nobody saw that coming. I I will adjust my portfolio to be proportional to the value, irrespective of the direction next time. So it's a coming and a going planet. And when the market, if it hits fair value, I'm going to say, how much should you own at fair value? Now, one day I was sitting at a hedge fund dinner. Now you're going, Dave, I didn't know you had a hedge fund. I didn't either. Um <laughs> But I'm in a hedge fund dinner with like seven other guys. One of them's Einhorn, who I know well, but that's not why I was at the dinner. And that was coincidence. And some techie was spouting off about tech stocks like crazy. And Einhorn's a man of few words. I don't know if you know him, but he, he really, he, when you talk to him, you feel like you're deposing him. He just, yes, yes, no, you know, that sort of thing. And the guy's spouting off and I'm watching Einhorn and, uh, and uh, he finally loses his shit. And he says, do you have any idea what it's like to ride a position down 95%? He says, do you know what 95% is? It's when you go down 90% and then your position gets cut in half. <laughs> and and the, the, this, this young tech, tech bull is like sort of reeling from, the, the, from having his ears pinned back by a guy who normally doesn't lash out like that. And uh, there will be a period where I'm going to be right. No one's going to want to hear it. And I, I told you so. There's a Roman proverb that says, uh, 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 the vanquished weep, victors don't laugh. And, and that, that period will be when it's time to buy. Right. When, 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 when you can't give the shit away. But, but I can't wait till that period. I, I've realized, I, I've realized, but you do want to own shit that pays you to own it. That's a really important concept that if you, you buy and say, look, I'm see that dividend there and see that revenue stream and see that that's enough for me. Because then your, your safety net is, look, they're paying me four and a half, five percent a year. Makes sense. Just to own the damn thing. So so I would not. You do not want to own story stocks during rough times. Those don't work well. But but you everything's like, gonna like go video like the AI story, is that what you're oh, saying? Oh no, that's solid as a rock at forty <laughs> times revenues. Yeah. <laughs> Nvidia story. You know, and, and people look at Nvidia and they think it's cheap. And I'm going, what, what do you I, I actually put out a tweet said I'm gonna put it in my deep value fund now. And they lost four percent or something. I don't um, you know I don't even care if somebody buys Nvidia. Calling it cheap though is silly. If you're just like look I want to ride the momentum. But if yeah. you're calling it no, cheap, that's fine. it reminds but, but, me when people used to say I'm voting for Obama because he's different. I'm like, vote for him for whatever reason you want. Don't tell me he's not different. <laughs> so, so, Nvid so, so NVIDIA is trading at 40 times revenues. And uh, according to Fred Hickey, their, their revenues in part are because they're selling real equipment way over the price they should be able to sell it for. And, and it's not like competitors aren't going to show up and say, by the way, we've got chips too. And it's supposed and, to and, work, right? Yeah, and th that's where it's supposed to work. And, you know, Sun Microsystems was at 10 times revenues before a 95% swan dive. 
So when those NVIDIA guys are blubbering in fetal position on the ground, I'm not going to feel a lot of pain for them. I'm not, I'm not going to sympathize. Microsoft, the last 10 bagger. Microsoft's a 10 bagger over the last dozen years. Five fold of that 10, meaning all but a factor of two, is valuation expansion. That will contract. Yeah. As I said, nothing has ever gotten over value without eventually becoming undervalued. Nothing in history, because nothing ever just goes up at, at, in terms of valuation and just stays overvalued. It will go back to cheap. And the guy said, well, Microsoft, you know, some guy the other day said, well, Microsoft, it, it, you know, 10 years ago was trading at four times today's earnings. I go, but that's 10 years later with all the inflation. That's not cheap. That's not right. Exactly. Yeah. That was reasonably priced. And now fivefold later valuation expansion, they're not reasonably priced. Wow. What new product are they putting out? Right. Some cloud shit. Yeah, they're exactly. seeding More products clouds. that aren't products. And, and what new Apple product has come out since Jobster died, right? Yeah. Nothing. Oh, people say, oh, the watch. I go, oh, my God. He invented the watch? I, th I thought that was invented like four or 500 years ago. <laughs> yeah, it's a cell phone that you wear on your wrist. It just, it's just smaller. You know, whatever. What, yeah, are, what are we talking about? Tedious as shit. Yeah. My wife wanted one. She hasn't used it. She has not used it. Yeah. They're stupid. My daughters have them. Uh, one daughter wears theirs, the other does not, I think. Yeah. Right. So, so it's, it's not a game changer. The Bobby, game changer is when he, no? when he pulled the phone out of his pocket. Yeah. What's that? When he, when he pulled that phone out of his pocket on stage. That oh, was the yeah, game right. changer. That was the game changer. Right. Yes. Yeah, that was a big deal. Yeah. All right. You want to wrap it up? Yeah, I've got 50 more questions, but we don't have time. For Go that. for it. Love it. If nothing, it's a ton of fun. Else.